Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> Presents today's sports report. On today's program, we'll talk about University of Georgia football and more. And now, from the studios of UGA Football News on Facebook and Instagram, here's the host of today's sports report, Chris Hall. Chris Hall with you here on today's sports report, brought to you by UGA Football News. On Facebook and Instagram, uh, Chris Hall, your host, uh, Matthew Hall, is along with us as uh, well. And uh, Matthew, good to have you with us on our program today. And it's good to have, of course, uh, Musa Smith with us. And uh, if you're a UGA football fan uh, from the past, uh, you you know about Musa Smith. Not that we're saying that Musa is an old guy. He's by not any means, uh, but uh, he has a great uh, pedigree, great heritage as a uh, University of Georgia football player. And in fact, and I, I, I remember uh, the, the Moose's uh, playing days at Georgia, uh, just a tremendous running back. And uh, back in uh, 2000, uh, I think it was 2002, as a junior, uh, Musa uh-huh. uh, carried for 2002, uh, or, or rather, uh, carried uh, for 1,324 yards, had eight touchdowns, and uh, he averaged 5.1 yards per carry. Uh, just a great season, just a great career, and uh, Musa went on to be uh, in the NFL as well. So, Musa, it is good to have you on our program today. Thank you for taking time to join us, uh, joining us on our program. And how are you doing these days? I'm doing awesome, man. I want to thank you for having me on the show. I'm very blessed uh, under the circumstances, you know, that everybody's facing in the world today. But, man, everything's good, so... I'm happy. All right. Well, good deal. And tell tell us about your life uh, today. Uh, you, you know what, what what are you involved in? What are you doing these days? Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm a dad at first most uh, first and foremost. I have three girls, and I just run them around and their sports <laughs> and their activities and coaching and training them. Um, but I'm also in the insurance industry, so I've been doing that for the last uh, close to ten years now, and um, work for a company called Impact Partnership. And uh, things have been very, very good, man. Can't complain. All right. Very good. Very good. Well, very active life. Matthew, good to have you uh, with us yeah. today. And uh, it's it's kind of like uh, the, the day before Christmas for Matthew because Musa, he gets to travel up to Athens tomorrow uh, to see the, nice. uh, the Bulldogs uh, yeah. take on uh, UAB. And uh, what well, might be, you know, I'm sure it's going to be a good game. Might be a challenging game. So how about it, Matthew? How are you doing today? Doing good. Uh, great to be on. Uh, appreciate Musa coming on with us today as well. And, yeah, it is day before game day. So, you know, nothing like that uh, That that Friday before a, a Saturday in Athens. You know, it's just uh, the anticipation of it all and, you know, getting getting ready to go watch the dogs. All right. Well, uh, Musa, let's, uh, let's get into this. I know, of course, uh, you're a great uh, University of Georgia football fan, uh, being a f- former player. Uh, and, uh, and, of course, we say around here, once a bulldog, always a bulldog. So we, we know that you are still a bulldog at heart. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the big game last Saturday, September the 4th, mm-hmm. when uh, Georgia took on Clemson. Uh, such a big game and, uh, you know, such an anticipated game. And people uh, looking forward to it in Bulldog Nation for months. And then the spotlight uh, around the country as it was a primetime game. Uh, great, even as because it's the first game of the season, is still a game that had playoff uh, implications. Georgia, of course, winning ten to three, kind of surprising the score. We we were all anticipating maybe a little more off, offense would show up in the game, but uh, these uh, two great defenses uh, had a great game and limited each other. And fortunately, Georgia was able to win. Tell us your impressions of that first game uh, for Georgia. Now we got it over with, and, and now we're going to get into the schedule. What was your impression of, of Georgia after you saw that first game? Uh, I thought it was a phenomenal uh, performance, especially from a defensive standpoint um, on both sides of the ball, both both organizations. Um, I wasn't surprised that the offense on either side was uh, – Normally, like when you have a schedule, you don't have a major you don't have a major game like this right out the gate. And there's several reasons for that from a scheduling standpoint is that by the third by the third game of the season, your offense is fully installed. 
and you guys are clicking, you're vibing, you're gelling, and the timing and everything is actually well put to part. And, you know, you're, you're clicking on all four cylinders. Um, and so... That that has that has that takes time. And for the defense, defense you can easily install a defense as long as you have the players and the mentality and everything set. You can go out there and you can you can look like you know like you guys been running running this uh, defense for you know eight games straight. The offense it takes a little bit of timing, you know, to get those get the gel going and um, just click on all four cylinders, but. Phenomenal. I, I liked it. I know it wasn't a high score game, but at the end of the day, um, you knew that the defense was out there on both, uh, both from both organizations. Uh, but not only that, um, it did come down to, you know, the defense actually winning the game because one, one little hiccup or two little hiccups from the offensive standpoint, throwing up some points, it could have, it could have been a different game, but luckily we came out on top. Yeah. I, I, I just, you know, I, I was, uh, these games kill me as I watch them. You know, I'm sitting on my couch at home and I'm coaching and I'm complaining and I'm encouraging and my wife is going crazy and say, you know, they can't hear you. I, I, I tell her, I don't care. I'm going to coach them anyway. But, you know, it's such a yeah. such a, a game with great high anticipation. Uh, and, and it's such a relief when Georgia wins uh, because you know now that Georgia has a pretty open path if they can take care of business uh, to get deep into this season. And, uh, of course, right now they're ranked number two in the country by many of the polls right behind Alabama. So, you know, Georgia has kind of a path now. Uh, if, if they can take care of business, take care of the SEC and their remaining schedule, they're going to be uh, sitting sitting pretty good uh, when they uh, get up to the point uh, perhaps of winning the SEC East. And, of course, we're getting way ahead of ourselves to get to the SEC championship game. So as, here you have this big anticipated game before a national audience. And then a week later, uh, you, you have UAB. And UAB, uh, University of Alabama at Birmingham, is not a bad uh, football team. They won their first game 31 to nothing over Jacksonville State. Uh, and, and, of course, you know, that is not on the level. Uh, we have to be honest with Georgia and Clemson. But UAB is not a, a, not a bad uh, team by any means. Uh, they have some very talented uh, players and a pretty pretty good team uh, for the level of the competition they'll be facing this year. So what is your mindset when you come out of the Clemson game and you have all of that anticipation and all of that attention, and now you go to a 3.30 Saturday afternoon game at Athens with UAB coming in and you're a big favorite uh, for the game, how, how do the players react to that? How, how do they come off of that, I guess, high with Clemson and now they're 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 going to uh, play in a game in which the, it is anticipated that they win the game, uh, you know, uh, by a pretty good uh, score. So how do players handle that? Is it up to the coaches to get the uh, players back down to where they need to be? Do the players take care of that? Uh, do the leaders of the team, you know, motivate the guys and say, okay, week one's done, let's go to week two. We got a good opponent coming in. Uh, as a former player yourself, how do you handle that situation? Man, that's a great question. And at the end of the day, you're absolutely right. It starts with leadership, right, from the head coach down and to set the tone of the practice and how you go into the, every other game and every other week. Um, but th at the end of the day, the game has to be played, right? right. You're in, you're anticipating Georgia to be, beat them, but at the end of the day, you can't underestimate any opponent. opponent. You can't step on the field and underestimate any opponent. That's when you get beat. So you have to, it starts with the preparation from day one, day, uh, you know, the first week, of, uh, first day of practice, and setting the tone. And at the end of the day, um, Georgia still has to prove, you know, we got to go out there and the defense, they got to build on top of the momentum that they have. And meanwhile, the offense, they got to go out there and prove that at the end of the day, they are, they are, um, they are, what they are capable of doing and actually present that on the field. And so practice, practice in the game should be just, um, it should be, it should be one of an intense focus, especially from an offensive standpoint, just to keep on building on the momentum that you have going on right now. Right. Right. And uh, so uh, Georgia has got to be ready. And I, I'm, I, you know, from what I understand, there's great leadership on this team uh, from uh, the, the leaders on offense and defense. And uh, the coaches can do what they can do to motivate uh, the guys. But I know uh, you being on a football team, you know, there are leaders, players who are leaders. 
and I'm sure they're going to be uh, getting the young guys ready and say, hey, let, let's go. With, if, if, if we don't do good this week, last week mean, means nothing. And so hopefully they'll take care of business with UAB. Now, you're a running back, and, of course, you a great running back with a great uh, career at the University of Georgia. And, uh, and I know probably, and I'm just, you know, kind of anticipating this, when you watch a, a football game, especially for the Bulldogs, you kind of focus in on the backfield, I would think, you know. And as a bu- running back, you want to see, well, uh, well, how is Zamir White doing and, and how are our running backs uh, doing? So what do you think about this, uh, this crop of running backs uh, for the University of Georgia uh, this year? And, and how they're being utilized and how they are performing. I know we have only one game under our belt. But, but, but what is your impression of the, the running back stable, I guess you can say, of the University of Georgia this year? Oh, man, the litter. The litter looks good. Yeah. The, the, the stable of horses, stallions, they look uh, primed and ready. Um, we're very diverse and we're very deep in that role and it's hard to keep up with all of them but all of them bring something different to the table that's why all of them are getting multiple touches um, it's awesome to see that uh, you know that you know any any single one of them could actually you know carry the load um, but also it's awesome to see these players progress such as the Zemir White uh, Cook uh, etc and you know Milton and um uh, what's the other gentleman's name? See, there's too many of them. That's, yeah, that's they're to remember. several, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, yeah, my mind went blank there. But at the end of the day, they are, they're they looking good. And I think we're going to see a lot uh, come from them this week. You're going to see them. Uh, I think we're going to establish the run game first, unlike we did last uh, game. Yeah. And, you know, carry the load uh, on the running back shoulders and open up the offense. Um, I think that is the Georgia way, and um, I'm, I'm very proud of them. I, I love watching all of them succeed, and then, you know, even the past uh, running backs in the last, uh, let's just say, um, eight years go on and uh, do some great things in the NFL as well. Yeah. Now, you, you played for the Bulldogs back in uh, uh, early uh, 2002, and, and uh, you, you played for the Bulldogs uh, in that era. How, how do you think – how do you think they, they – college game is uh, when it comes to running offenses how do you think it's changed from 2002 to 2021 how are how are things are the players bigger are they faster are the offenses uh, different now are the defenses better how do you think the game has changed in the co- in college since you were at the university of georgia you know what that's a great question i, I don't know about the game changing um, you just see a more elaborate offenses, et cetera, and, and schemes and, you know, just more packages being put together, more players being utilized, uh, such as the running back position. Back when I played, I mean, I was the premier running back. Um, my, my backups or, you know, uh, my fellow, uh, comrades and running backs, um, they didn't get the, they didn't get that many touches and, I, right now, I think it's a beautiful thing for from a standpoint of where you don't have to rely on, you know, just one or, you know, two players or whatever the case may be, is that you, you're you're staying fresh as a running back or you're, you know, you have so many, you have so many at, at, at a position that the depth chart is deep. It runs deep. And so you can count on other people to actually contribute. Um from a uh, from a game standpoint, I don't. The game to me is it's a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that right now we're in this era where we're actually creating and we're developing super athletes. The type of training that these guys are getting, uh, it's always been a science from a training standpoint, but now you know, 2021. It's even more than, um, even more of a science, and guys and girls, whatever sport you're in, there is personal training out here that professional athletes are getting. Now, now these young kids and the young athletes are actually getting this professional training at a very young age, and so that's why I said we're actually in an era where we're actually creating and training super athletes of the f- future. Yeah. I'd- you know, uh, of course, when you have a, a like a running back, I guess backfield uh, by committee, you're not going to get those thousand yard rushers 
But uh, you, you do, as you put all of the players together, all of the running backs together, you get tremendous, uh, you, you get tremendous uh, production out of your running backs. I think, Musa, you could suit up today. You could hold your own even today, don't you think? I mean, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd suit up until I got hit. <laughs> I'd tap out, tap out, sit on the sideline, drink some Powerade, and put some oxygen on my face. And I got you, bro. Call it a day. <laughs> I got you, bro. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, Matthew and myself and Musa going to look at uh, a few of the games. Uh, coming up uh, this weekend, uh, some interesting SEC games. And we'll take a break, and we'll be back in just a moment after this word from Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs and a tremendous sponsor of our program. Today's sports report on UGA Football News uh, on Facebook and Instagram. We'll be back in just a moment. Today's sports report will be right back after this message from Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. This is head coach Kirby Smart. It's my job to coach the fundamentals of football and prepare my guys for the future. Well, my friends at Southeast Mortgage are preparing you for your future by becoming a homeowner. Every Bulldog deserves a home. If you're in the market to purchase or refinance, I trust Southeast Mortgage to provide the best experience and get it done. Visit southeastmortgage.com slash UGA to get pre-approved for your home loan today. Southeast Mortgage the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. Southeast Mortgage of Georgia Incorporated, NMLS, number 103956, Georgia Residential Mortgage License, number 6578. The only thing better than winning between the hedges on Saturday is coming home to this on Sunday. On the football field, I'm a coach. At home, I'm a dad. The field is where legends are made, where boys become men, dreams become reality, and teammates become family. Family is the most important thing. It's everything we have. And home is where a family's memories are made. So when the time comes to finance your home, make the smart choice and get your home loan with Southeast Mortgage. Thank you for joining us, and welcome back to today's Sports Report. All right, we're back here on uh, today's Sports Report. Chris Hall with you, Matthew Hall with you, and uh, we're very pleased to have with us Musa Smith, a uh, great running back uh, for Georgia. Back in uh, 2002, 2003, had a pretty good Sugar Bowl, didn't you, On uh, in 2003. Uh, beat Florida State. You carried 23 times for 145 yards. Uh, it, do, you, do, you, do you look back, uh, just before we get into our games, do you look back often, Musa, and, and think about your playing days? And, and uh, it, it, do you have fond memories of those days at Georgia? I know you do. Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it was one of the best times of my life. I mean, coming from where I came from in Pennsylvania, where not not a lot happened, grew up in the country, and then, you know, coming down to Athens and just that vibrant city and how alive it is, especially during the football season. And it was just, it was a time that you'll never forget. I'll never forget yeah. uh, part of my playing days and just phenomenal experience. I wouldn't trade anything for the world for it. Yeah, well, uh, we, we, you know, we appreciate all of our. I hate to call you a former Bulldog. That's like, you know, okay, you're done. You're not done, but, uh, but a, a, a Bulldog player from the past. Let's call it like that. Uh, we're going to look at uh, just some games here in the uh, SEC. Uh, coming up uh, this weekend, and then uh, Matthew and myself and you will maybe make some predictions here. I uh, have an interesting game, Florida taking on South Florida. Uh, you know, Florida is the team that we love not to like. I hate to use the word hate, but, you know, we, we Florida, Dan Mullen and uh, Florida beat uh, Florida Atlantic 35-14 in the first uh, week of the season uh, for Florida. They'll be taking on South Florida, which lost to North Carolina State 45 to nothing. So, you know, Florida, that, that's our, I guess you could consider to be our biggest rival in the SEC East. Um, yeah. So what, what do you think about Florida? You know, what have you seen in Florida? What, what is your impression of Florida? And what do you think about, you know, it should be an easy win for Florida this week. What do you think about that? It should be. I mean, if they go in with the right mindset and expectation, I mean, they should, they should do work. I think that they'll easily cover 35 on uh, this game coming up. I do too, Matthew. What do you think? Uh, Matthew yeah, loves the Gators. Them. Matthew loves the Gators. I got to tell you that deep in his heart. Hey, there's nothing wrong with them. I got I got <laughs> no. a lot of friends now that are Gators, and I got to oh, give yeah. a shout out to Danny. I got to give a shout out to Danny Whirlpool. Yeah. I go down to his uh, Desire Cup uh, every year. It's around the Georgia Florida game where 
former uh, Georgia players and Florida players get together and uh, do a cool. robbery for a cause. Yeah. It's a golf event. We raise a lot of money for uh, Danny's charity event. And more importantly, awesome. the, the leaders that are actually inside these communities that absolutely need all types of resources right. that Danny helps bring in. Yeah. They're absolutely the true heroes. When, whenever you actually get down to the nitty gritty and look inside the organization and these leaders and what they're doing for their community. So yeah. shout out to Danny Warfel and the Gators until we play them. <laughs> I like them. I got you. I got you. Well, Danny Warfel is a class guy. He's always been a class yeah. guy. What about it, Matthew? You're going to take uh, South Florida? Yeah. <laughs> no, South, South Florida is not going to be able to stick, stick with the Gators. Uh, not this weekend. And, and, you know, I did see, I did happen to see, uh, the Gators uniforms for September 11th, and uh, they do have a patriotic themed helmet going on and uniform going on. So that'll be cool. I, I do have to, I do have to give them some props for that. Hey, Musa, did I, you see the uh, did you see the video the uh, Nebraska football team put out for September the 11th? Did you happen to see that? Uh, no, I did. Oh man, you you got to look that up. Uh, in, in Nebraska has a former Army Army Ranger who's a walk on linebacker. And uh, really? they, they put together a, a, a very touching and moving uh, video uh, that, that uh, you know, uh, remembers uh, 9-11 and uh, special uniforms they'll be wearing. For you and everyone, look that up, Nebraska football team. I'm not yeah. much of a Cornhusker fan, but that was, that was fantastic. All right, let's move on. Alabama, Al and this is the bless your heart game, you know. Alabama, which beat <laughs> Miami 44-13 last week is taking on Mercer, uh, but bless their hearts. Uh, Mercer won over Point University. I didn't even know. I know a little bit about Point University. I didn't even know they had a football team. But Mercer won 69 to nothing. So, you know, uh, Musa, Alabama looks so good. Oh, my. Uh, you know, Bryce, uh, Bryce Young, a quarterback. Uh, you know, here they are. They're reloading again. Three returning starters on offense, and they they reload again. And they got oh my goodness, Alabama just looks tough in in uh, midseason form. What is your impression of Alabama? And I, I know you you're not going to give Mercer much of a uh, shot in this game. But what about Alabama? What do you think about Alabama this year? And what will it take for Georgia to beat Alabama? Defense, defense. I hope. What do you think? You, you know what? Uh, the, you got to respect what Bama has actually um, the legacy and what year in year out. Yeah. Uh, you talk about reloaded. They have always been loaded. It's not. It's not even a matter of reloading. Yeah. They they're loaded. Um, and so yeah. <laughs> well, you said they're they're playing Mercer. Who Mer are they playing? Mercer, Mercer from Macon, Georgia. Mercer, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, lo Lord have mercy on them. <laughs> no. Bama's, Bama's definitely going to cover it easily. Probably 35, 40 points. Yeah. And at, at the end of the day, it's a it's a beautiful thing because a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to actually do what Bama does year in year out. Yeah. Um. And you have to take your hats off on it and yeah. respect them. They just, um, they just, but yeah, it, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, um, they're a powerhouse, and at the end of the day, um, I can't wait to meet up with them because we owe them joke or something. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Just once. We, we, owe, we owe them a loss against us. <laughs> yes, yes, we, we, just one time, yeah. just one time. And of course, and by the way, Mercer is a Baptist university. So when we say, Lord, have mercy, maybe the Lord will help out Mercer a little bit. What about it, Matthew? Hey. Uh, the, the Alabama Mercer? Mm. What you, uh, yeah, hey. yeah, I mean, Bam, you know, uh, Bama is definitely going to slaughter them, I think, here. I mean, uh, I will tell you that, Jay, uh, you know, side note for Mercer, Jake Fong's brother, Dylan, is one of the backup quarterbacks for Mercer. He did throw, I know he threw a touchdown in that game last week, his first collegiate touchdown. So That's good. Congrats to, congrats to Dylan Fromm for Mercer there you go. There you go. on that, too. But, but. But playing against Bama is just really not much of a shot. Well, it's a play, it's a payday game for Mercer. You know, they, they'll get a million dollars or whatever from, and it'll help out. I was just them. about to say that. Collect <laughs> that check, get back on the bus, plane, whatever yep. you came in on, and uh, 
Yeah, you know, go go to the bank with it, buddy. Uh, yeah, you know, and what, what a what a thrill for those players from Mercer actually to be in Tuscaloosa in that atmosphere to say I played against Alabama. I mean that that's that's cool. Uh, you know, forget the score, whatever the score was, but I did play against Alabama. Uh, a couple of more games uh, we'll focus on. Uh, a kind of interesting game, uh, back uh, kind of a throwback game, I guess, to South uh, with the old Southwest Conference. Uh, well, Arkansas is taking on Texas this Saturday. I guess beside Iowa and Iowa State, which are playing, this might be a featured uh, game for the weekend. Uh, Arkansas beat Rice 38-17. Uh, and uh-huh. Texas will be coming into Fedville. They beat Louisiana 38-18. Uh, to 18. Uh, Arkansas has got a pretty good defense. Got a, a couple of really stellar guys on offense and a pretty good running back. Texas, of course, uh, you know, they're coming into the SEC. So this is kind of a preview for them, I guess. What do you think about this game? It will be in Fayetteville. And uh, the fan base in Arkansas is so hungry to see uh, Arkansas return to some glory that they had in the, in the past years. Uh, you know, for me, I, I, I'm picking Arkansas in this game, but I wouldn't be surprised if Texas win. What, what do you think about this game? You know what? I, honestly, I haven't. I really haven't watched Arkansas. Uh, I want to say in the last two seasons, really. Yeah. So I, I don't, really don't know much about the organization or even uh, Texas. So I'm gonna have to defer. I'm gonna have to let uh, Chris give his expert opinion on it. There you go. Well, uh, <laughs> my mother was born in Arkansas, and my brother was born in Arkansas. And so, uh, in order for us to have peace at a Thanksgiving meal this coming Thanksgiving. I'm going with Arkansas. That's my motivation. <laughs> what about it, Matthew? What are you thinking this yeah, game? It'll, it'll be a good, I think it'll actually be a good game. And, I, uh, you know, Pittman going down there and uh, playing with Texas, I mean, I think it'll be a much closer game than what than what uh, what a lot of people anticipate seeing. And I, I, I think that I think that uh, Arkansas will get the job done uh, um, against Texas here. But I, I do believe Texas is uh, – is going to put up a good fight. Yeah, that, that'll be an interesting game. Good game. All right, finally, of course, Georgia uh, taking on UAB. And, of course, we're, I'm going to, I'm sure, speak for all of us. We'll, we'll choose the Bulldogs over uh, UAB. Uh, you know, I, for me, I want to see the offense uh, kind of, you know, have a really good stellar game. By the way, uh, JT Daniels, uh, there's some chatter about him having some kind of injury that might limit his play, but it wouldn't be bad to see uh, Carson Beck or Brock uh, Vandergriff or some of those guys get in and play at quarterback. Uh, so I, I really want to see Georgia offensively uh, have a really good game. Defense, I don't think you have to worry about. My word, that defense is tough. Uh, so Georgia over UAB, uh, any any further thoughts uh, uh, from you, Musa, on this game coming up for the uh, Bulldogs? Yeah, I think we'll definitely uh, cover 18. Uh, on UAB, I think you're going to see uh, more of a, you know, um, more of an offensive game from us. Not worried about the defense, but I think this is one of the games where the offense comes out and they get established and create their identity. I think you're gonna, if, if that is the case with JT Daniels, I think you're really going to see uh, the running back uh, carry the load and establish the running game, and then uh, uh, you know really open up the offense. And so. Uh, obviously, we all like Georgia in this one, but the game still has to be played. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Yeah, what about it, Matt? Yeah, I mean, you know, Georgia, I mean, just like I always say on any given Saturday, it doesn't matter who your opponent is, you can lose. So you can't go in there with your head down. I mean, thinking that this, you know, just show, show up with warm bodies and all of a sudden it's a win. I mean, you got to show up and play the game. Uh, if JT is out, I don't, I don't see uh, much, <clears throat> still much of a problem for any of our backups, I think they're all, um, you know, uh, have the uh, the potential to go out there and pull out a big win for the dogs, you know, at home. I mean, I think there's a lot of hype surrounding Georgia going into this game. So I don't think it's going to much matter who's, who's playing quarterback. Or, uh, and I also agree with uh, Moose's assessment on establishing uh, the run game. Um, I think, you you know, with any uh, uh, quarterback uh, injuries possibly up in there. I think you'll definitely see a, a move to that. Yeah, we just need to take yeah. care of business on on, on uh, Saturday. Well, Musa Smith has been with us. He rushed for 2,202 yards, 19 touchdowns uh, on 454 carries during his three-year career at Georgia. Average 4.9 yards per carry. That's pretty good there, uh, Musa. That, that, that's, that's something to be proud of. Then you went yes, on sir. and you just took the NFL by storm. 
and uh, you play for the Ravens. And Musa, you, you're a great guy. Uh, you're a uh, former, uh, former, a uh, great play, play. Uh, previous player play. for Georgia. How about that? And uh, we're so happy and glad. And God bless you in what you're doing these days and, and all the good that you're doing and all of your pursuits. It's been great having you with us today. We look forward to having you back so we can talk a little yeah. bit more about University of Georgia football. Thank you for being with us, Musa. Yeah, thank absolutely. You so much. Anytime, and God bless you guys, man. Thank right. you. God thank bless you, man. Thank you so much. All right, Matthew. Any final yeah. words from you? Uh, of course, as always, go dogs. Yeah, and, and, and Matthew will be in the stands. He'll be he'll be the guy wearing the red shirt. So you, <laughs> you'll be able you'll be able <laughs> yeah. to see him. All right. Well, yeah, thank you so much. Ninety thousand other. Folks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> thank you for being with us today on today's Thanks. sports report uh, <laughs> on uh, UGA football uh, news on Instagram and on Facebook. And thank you, Southeast Mortgage, for making our program possible. We love you guys. Thank you. Join us again next time on today's Sports Report. UGA Football News would like to thank Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs, for sponsoring our program today. When the time comes to finance or refinance your home, make the smart choice and get your home loan from Southeast Mortgage. Your friends at Southeast Mortgage are ready to help you. Visit southeastmortgage.com slash UGA today for more information. This and previous editions of today's sports report can be found at UGA Football News on Facebook and Instagram, on many leading podcast apps, and at todayssportsreport.com. Be sure to join us for our next program as we keep you up to date with University of Georgia football and more. Until then, be safe and go dogs.